Well, this is a bull pup. And so is this, and that, and that, and that. And today what we're gonna do is find out which one is the best bull pup. Let's have the battle of, dare I say it again, the bull pups. <laughs> Welcome back everybody, Clint today with Classic Firearms out here at Take Aim Training and Range with Matt. What's up everybody? And we are excited to do an entire video all about bullpups. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what are bullpups, Matt? So bullpups are kind of a designation for the design of a firearm in which the action or where the firing of, you know, loading and unloading of the firearm happens is behind the firing hand of the shooter. So you can see here that the trigger and the you know, controls are up here, all the actions back here. That's where the bullpup is. And that is pretty much where the mag goes, the chambering, the extracting, all the goodness like Matt just said. And we've got on the table here in front of us a list of, um, a collaboration, if you will, of um, probably some of the most popular bullpups out there. And starting with the OG, probably the most popular, the first successful mm -hmm. uh, commercial Bullpup, which was the STG 77, otherwise known as the Styrog. If you want to show that one off, really if you're quick. a uh, diehard fan, you've definitely seen this before. Yeah, the guy that apparently just can't die. He's hanging from a chain, and then all of a sudden he appears again at the end of the movie. But it's okay. Christmas miracle, I guess. <laughs> So the Styrog, again, has been around for decades, mm -hmm. and like I said, was the first successful bullpup to be offered to the commercial market, and is obviously still here today. Still with us. Um, yeah, and you know, some people might wonder, you know, this looks weird, this looks very unlike a traditional rifle. Why would you want a bullpup, right? Ah. So uh, one of the main benefits is that you can have a longer barrel, but still a compact kind of overall length. Absolutely, so if you were to take a look at, let's say, well, barrel length, right? And you look at your traditional rifle, and let's say we wanna have a 16 inch, which is the standard mm -hmm. uh, in this country, pretty much, a 16 inch barreled traditional rifle where the magazine and the chambering, the extracting and all that type of fun stuff is taking place just forward of the trigger hand. Well, you would be looking at a much longer gun than what you would be seeing here. Mm -hmm. If you were to have a 16 inch bullpup, you're pretty much coming in at the size of what potentially could be even a 10 inch barrel, yep. which means you're not losing the velocity out of the bullpup like you would be out of a much shorter configuration or a shorter barrel traditional rifle. And then also, it, because the action's further back, you don't have like the stock extending out of your shoulder and putting the weight further out. All the weight gets further back towards the person, which means that this is much more controllable because it's all the weights back here into your chest. Right, so it, you don't have to worry about his fatigue as much, which is nice. So the STG 77, or just otherwise known as the AUG by Steyr, uh, is again, a very popular and cool rifle. Next up, we have another very, very popular rifle, and perhaps also the most unique on the table because all of these other rifles are a short stroke piston driven design this one takes the well probably matt's favorite operating system from the ak-47 and it is still piston driven but a long stroke design mm -hmm. you want to talk about that real quick yep so this is the tavor x95 and it was developed in israel by iwi so you know they had previously been using their galil rifles which are like a uh, a descendant of the ak-47 platform long stroke gas piston rotating bolt and effectively what they've done is they've just moved that whole action backwards into a bulb up design so that you have that long stroke design up here um but all the action is back here in what would normally be considered the stock um you know, so these are really popular rifles. People love Tavors, and especially now that it's come out with the X95, kind of the most recent version. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a very successful design utilized uh, by their defensive forces and stuff. Um, but yeah, the Tavor is a fantastic rifle. Yeah, it's super ergonomic. It's definitely one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Love the weight, love the weight distribution and everything else about it. And underneath the hand covers or the little covers right up here is also a Picatinny rail section. Mm -hmm. And there's also quite a bit of aftermarket support for the IWI Tavor too which is pretty nice. Another cool thing about bullpups, when you think about it, if you're looking for, well, an option for close quarters. Uh, the, again, you're not losing that velocity, you're not losing the effectiveness of the 5.56 cartridge, which all of these are chambered in, and all of them taking NATO magazines, except for the Steyr AUG. There is a model out there that will take NATO mags, mm -hmm. which again, are like your standard M16, M4, AR15 magazines, but I hear it doesn't generally work as well in the feeding department. Yeah, which is kind of yeah. funny. The OG Styrogs, it's a it's an aesthetic that are also really reliable. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And if you think about vehicle maneuvers, having something a little bit more compact, 
a bull pup definitely shines in that case. Right, when you look historically at the idea of like carbines or paratrooper models and stuff, you know, we've had whole industries designed to uh, create shorter rifles right. for paratroopers, vehicle operators, medics, or other non-combatant kind of personnel. And a bullpup just makes your standard rifle that size. Right. And uh, next up on the list, we've got from our friends over at Desert Tech, this is the MDRX, which is a uh, pretty unique rifle. Also, some of these, one of these has a downward extracting, others are off to the side. Mm -hmm. This one is completely ambidextrous, which without any tools, uh, you can switch which side the gun actually extracts its spent casings on, but it also shoots it away from the shooter and forward. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter which side it's already on, it's not gonna be coming back and hitting you in the face. <laughs> yeah, so this is actually a really cool design in my opinion. So you basically have the extractor built into this plate and you can see there's a little spring-loaded tab so you can just pop this off and then you have your ejection port on this side and again a spring-loaded tab to get this side off and as the bolt kind of reciprocates there's a little uh, a little tab on the bolt that activates a that scissor kind of extractor and it just pushes it over and then as the bolt goes forward it pushes it forward and out through this ejection port which is why you just swap it because whichever side it's going to come back and activate the scissor it's just squeezing together and pushing it over yeah i mean super super cool i mean it's a it's one of those things where it's like it's so simple i can't believe other people didn't think of that <laughs> right now the mdrx also is a uh it's a pretty hefty design yeah. you know it's got a little bit of weight to it but again since it's so focused in the center and the rear if you're having to aim down sights for a long period of time it's actually not that fatiguing right i mean again that that shorter design where all the weight gets rested back against you and again especially when you have like a nice grippy butt pad where it kind of clings to your body right yeah it, it's easier to hold that weight i think it's because you know i think there's more implementation of polymer into these other designs certainly there are polymer elements to this but i, I feel like it's probably a large portion of the weight is just through to there's a lot more metal yeah. in like the receiver and things on this rifle sure i can see that and then the last two we have here are probably the newest ones to hit the market but we've pretty much gone in order of age mm -hmm. really uh so the last two even though this one hyphen as far as age goes because it is based off of the croatian service rifle the vhs and then there's the vhs gen 2 correct mm -hmm. which is this is more familiar yeah to. this is this is more so much the gen 2. um i, I love the springfield hellion so yeah. you know it's again when we say it's the newer one it's the newer one on the market right but uh certainly uh again one of the things i really like is ambidextrous controls on this thing so you can see the charging handle can flip to either side very reminiscent of the g36 yep and then you can uh change out your ejection port so you can see there is already an ejection port cover here and one on this side um, so you can get that swapped around ambidextrous controls and in fact you know many of the bullpup designs that come out nowadays are, are great for for ambidextrous controls and and left-handed users the only thing you have to do on some of these is you know you can make a simple swap to change out which side it's ejecting off of sometimes like with the older design style aug it is what it is it, well you can change it but yeah. it requires like changing out your whole bolt because it's yeah. got to actually be a mirror image bolt but it's still possible right. on some of those older designs now with the springfield hellion also it is, has a very unique feature among all other bull pups that i've known on the market an adjustable length of pull <laughs> So you can actually adjust the stock on this to fit a variety of different shooters, types of shooters, body types, and so on and so forth. So that way it's actually comfortable to the shooter. Mm -hmm. Cool design. Now, last one we've got here is our uh, is probably the, the tiniest of them all. This is from uh, Keltec, the RDB. Mm -hmm. Again, cool design, M lock all the way around, a lot of metal components all the way also. As far as you know, attachments, things like that, this one I think is the most attachment friendly, uh, which is pretty nice. And we'll get into you know some of the nitty gritty about the rails and you know pros, cons, likes, dislikes, stuff like that. Also, pencil barrel on this guy, so nice and thin. The controls are a little bit more uh, they're uh, basic yeah I guess you could call it that you know so we'll see how those do in a couple of reloads and whatnot but ambi controls as well and this one I mean it, you can say it's a complete ambidextrous design it looks to be like you can switch the uh, charging handle over and on top of that downward extraction not from the side not forward just straight down which is easy enough so that's actually what the RDB means is rifle downward ejecting bullpup so yeah. it's just kind of an abbreviation right and the only bullpup that we don't have here that's probably one of the most popular is the uh, which also has downward extraction is uh the p90 yeah the ps90 is probably been my favorite yeah so one thing that's really cool we've been talking about these ambidextrous controls and how it can be important depending on which side
side you're shooting because obviously if your face is right up into that ejection port it's going to be a problem for you mm -hmm. i'm left-handed clint's right-handed some of these uh are going to be pretty friendly for one some not so friendly yeah. for another yeah we're going to test part of that out uh but yeah you know the the ps90 is fantastic because of that downward ejection fully basically ambidextrous yeah. and you know even uh even things like the safety where it's inside the trigger guard, mm -hmm. just fantastic. Right, but we wanted to keep everything else 5.56 five, today, so let's go ahead and now let's get to the fun stuff. Now that we've covered pretty much all the bullpups we'll be shooting today, and let's shoot them. And there's that famous Styrog waffle style grid pattern magazine that is actually a really good 5.56 five, mag. Let's go ahead and load this thing up and let's see how it feels. Yeah, the Styrog. There, it's uh, it leaves a smile on the face for sure. I'll give my final thoughts and opinions here in just a moment after Matt takes a run with it. All right, I already can tell this isn't quite so left-handed friendly, but let's go ahead and try it out. I don't know if y'all could see the brass bouncing off my face, but I don't think this was the one, man. Dude, it's just blessing you with a little bit of brass, all right, man? There's nothing to hate about it. As long as you keep your mouth shut, you don't have to worry about any type of dental procedure, yeah. all right? I'll tell you so, what, so it, it is more annoying than anything else. It's not like it hurts, yeah. but man, just imagine someone. It's just reminding you that it loves you. <laughs> so the Styrog, other than getting a uh, brass shower, um, how do you think it felt? To, uh, I mean, shoot? it feels good. I mean, yeah. obviously, uh, you know, with the first target, I was keeping it pretty well on. When I tried to transition, I messed up a little bit. But well, the uh, other one's like a 10 inch spot. But I tell you what, there. one thing that I love about it is it's got that longer barrel. This is like an 18 inch barrel, I think. Yeah, and, I, I uh, think you're right, yeah. And so, you know, you get a little bit extra velocity. And I think you can tell when you hear it hit the target. It, it, Thumps. Yeah. yeah. Right? Now, some other cool things about this is, uh, well, cool, some yes, some no. Uh, you obviously don't have a lot of space for accessories and attachments, and that wasn't really that thought of at that point in time. And so they have actually made with later generations, like the A3, a couple of other, I guess you could say improvements. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like I said, there's a whole aesthetic here that I really appreciate. Now you'll notice there is somewhere for your support hand to go with this vertical grip that can both be vertical or horizontal. Mm -hmm. If you wanna show how that works really quick. Sure, so there is a- again uh, is oh, more friendly for a right-handed user. button on this side. And so you can uh, adjust, pull down. There you go. Bam. And then Looks you like kind of have more of a traditional grip. Or you know, you can reach back here if you wanted to. Yep. You know, I've always wondered this. We never tested this though. If you shot a lot of rounds through this and mm -hmm. got it really, really hot with this up like that, do you think it'd start to melt? You know, I, I doubt it would probably melt, but I, your hand is gonna get uncomfortable because you can feel the heat just off of two mags uh, be coming man. off of that. You'd be all right. It'd be fine. Now, other than the extraction, it does uh, the felt recoil. I think it actually feels really, really good. There's obviously a little bit of movement, a little bit of play. I am a fan of the flash hider that they have on it. Uh, granted, it does its job. It's not going to do anything much for recoil mitigation. Uh, you also have a pick rail, obviously up top for the optic, but also on the right hand side. So if you run it to run a light there, which ironically you would need a pressure pad for again a right-handed shooter. Left-handed shooter, you might still be able to manip manipulate that with your offhand a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. So again, if we uh, if for we your support hand. Sorry, this is a little awkward for me. Uh, yeah, you get, I so, get it pretty good. You know, if, if you mounted a light here, you could probably get, you know, your offhand to a, a button or something. Uh, maybe if you taped it to the grip itself. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So there are there are options. Granted, not the most attachment friendly. But yeah. Let's go ahead and move on to, I guess now it's the uh, Tavor, right? Tavor, let's move X95. On to the, yeah, let's move on to the X95 and see how it shoots. Now everything on the IWI Tavor is factory, except for obviously the EOTech. It does have integrated iron sights, which Matt was showing a little bit earlier, and also the three prong uh, flash hider from Surefire because, well, we wanted to suppress that and see how this did. If you're curious about that, go check that video out. All right, let's go ahead and load and make ready on this guy. Very familiar AR style controls. And let's see if we're zeroed. All right, 
so the controls on the Tavor I think are definitely a little bit more favorable. The reason I didn't do a little reload with the AUG is because we only have one mag. It is what it is. It's a good mag for the one we have. But I will say with the AUG, mm -hmm. uh, the controls are nice for a right-handed shooter. So you go ahead and take over really quick All right. and let us know what you think. Oh, grab my mag. All right, guys. So here's the Steyr AUG from a left-handed perspective. All right, so get that chambered. All right, so the safety immediately, you know, only available there on the left side. So that's uh, a little bit of a problem. But let's see if we can avoid getting hit in the face this time. We're going to put our face kind of far back. getting hit it was mostly brushing off the the side here so there is a little bit of work the uh, shell deflector is doing yeah but uh again so from a left-handed perspective uh the fact the safety is only on one side i'm mm -hmm. sure that there are ambi safeties there out. are yeah. and uh, again you can flip this uh over it looks like to the other side as far as extraction yeah so if you were in a situation where this was my personal rifle you would make sure it's a little bit I more i would set it up for myself but yeah. uh even so i you know i thought the repul recoil impulse was really good um you know it was very uh controllable and yeah. I thought that uh, yeah, it felt really good shooting. I will say this, I noticed that the trigger on this gun I think I like a little bit better than what's on the Styrog. The AUG feels like there's a lot it's of squish. Really squishy. Really squishy. Real squishy. And the bullpups are kind of known for not having fantastic triggers. Yep. So the IWI Tavor, I think they clean it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Still not perfect, but definitely feels better. And so, you know, the reason why they're known for that is because your trigger's up here, the action is back here. So there's got to be a linkage of some kind mm -hmm. that's traversing from the trigger to the action and that linkage the interaction between your trigger the linkage the linkage and the firing mechanism all that is kind of got a little bit of slop and that's part of why it feels so squishy it's not real crisp like say a, you know something that's got a hammer like an ar where right. you could really tune those surfaces right and just to show you guys one more time on the tavor there's again actually picatinny rail underneath these rail covers <laughs> you push this little gridded part slide that forward that can come completely off exposing the picatinny rail so as far as attachments go on this guy yeah you've got you've got a capability you've got, you've got a fair amount of real estate up here right which is which is again a nice thing to have if you want to throw on grips lasers lights all that type of fun tactical gizmos you can do that and i heard you mention the iron sights uh so this yes. is one of i think only two that we're looking at that has iron sights which again i feel is a plus in my book definitely a plus especially since they're hidden and mm -hmm. you can put optics on top of them things like that i personally would recommend qd optics mm -hmm. so that way if you needed to get to them you could quickly do that uh there's options of course some of you might be thinking was like well you know you don't have that option on a lot of guns uh, and you're right so just be mindful of that if you want to play that game of you know two is one one is none mm -hmm. type of mindset all right but uh yeah i do like the iron sights on this i like the integrated qd sling swivels as well that they have kind of all over the place on this gun and oh all in all, it's it is one of my favorite bull pubs, but will it be my favorite today? We got, a couple, we got a couple more to find out. So. Yeah. Now the MDRX also has a pretty unique feature as well. If you purchase a conversion kit, you can actually upgrade, if you will, the cartridge or the caliber that this gun shoots. You can switch out the magwell, and of course you have to re replace the bolt face or the bolt itself because, well, if you wanna shoot 7.62 NATO out of it, it's not gonna work with a 5.56 bolt, all right? Now let's go ahead and uh, Let's just run a couple rounds through it really quick, see how it feels, and see if those controls are as ergonomic as what was on the X95. Let's see. Man. One thing's for sure, that two chamber break is concussive. Wow. So, uh, that's also, a loud boy. Yeah, also, if you might not be able to pick up on camera all that well, but the left hand extraction, it's forward extracting. Mm -hmm. So, I can assume if you're a right hand or a left handed shooter and it was on the right hand side of the gun, you'd have the same issue. Those rounds are just pegging the inside of my arm here, which again, it actually. You only notice it the first couple of times, mm -hmm. and then it goes away. You know what I mean? At least it was your arm, not your face. That's true. It is definitely not my face or my teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Southpaw. All right. Uh, yeah, you can finish my mag out. Have a good time. Cool. So right away, ambidextrous safety, that's a plus. Ambidextrous uh, mag catch here, that's a plus. 
Let's uh. So the issue with bullpups are also, if you find yourself having a malfunction like we are right now, uh, we got quite simply a one, two, three, is there a fourth one in there? I, I, a triple feed? <laughs> uh, you have to really kind of, cause it's actually coming down into the stock here. There we go, Let's those uh, are out. Take it, point it this way. Yep, that one's out. So go ahead and rack it a couple times and see if there was just three stuck in there. All right. Try that now. All right. There's one in there. Okay. Did just fall just, out. Yeah, yeah. just fell out. Also, I don't like the uh, catches on the front and rear of this. Yeah. Because like, as I'm trying to work this, you know, this charging, like if you tilt it up just a little bit, yeah. it gets caught. Yeah. So I need to move up some. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and run it real quick. All right. No, it might be empty at that point. Nope. No. Yeah, we're getting. I, I, I wonder if this is an ammo thing. Yeah, it, it could be, you know, some kind of. See, it's stuck in there, though. I mean, it's hard to tell if it's a light primer strike or just that little floating fire, floating firing pin. Yeah, so you know, a lot of firearms have floating firing pins, and so as it chambers, you'll actually get a very light dimple. So it could be a light primer strike, or it could just be the dimple from that uh, free floating firing pin coming forward as it's chambered. Yeah. Hard, to, hard to tell. Um, certainly, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate we're having these kind of me mechanical malfunctions. Because I feel like we've run this into MDRX that we've had in the video room for a long time without too many issues. Go ahead and finish out the mag. Let's see if we can get through it. Let's see if we can. So that should be it. Good lock back though. Yeah, chamber's clear. Okay. And that's the other thing too. Being able to check a uh, clear chamber on a bullpup isn't always the easiest thing to do as well. <laughs> on yeah. certain models. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they, uh, so uh, that was that was empty brass. So yeah, there's there should be like a window or something where you could get a better look at this maybe. Yeah. Um, it's possible that you know they intend that if you have a kind of malfunction like that again, since these do come off so easily, maybe that you should take this off. Right. But what if everything's kind of jammed up like that three rounds? Like I don't know yeah. that. What if you're in the middle of combat? Mm. <laughs> so so there's that. Uh, the MBRX, however, I will say this, even though we're having some issues with that, again we can't really verify if this is a ammo issue but the Syrog and the Tavor have both run fine yep so there's that we still got what two more to run or two one more. more so yeah so it's kind of like yeah two more so I guess we'll find out through the rest of the video the other thing I want to say too since we're harping on it a little bit the other thing I don't like about this gun the rail mm -hmm. the rail even though you have attachment points for accessories how the rail is actually attached uh, you do have pretty much just these little screws here and then there's a pin that's supposed to go through here that all right uh, the only word I have for it is a pain in the ass right and you'll notice it's not in there that's because it's so easy to lose mm. so it's one of those things there's a pin that's supposed to be right through here I can see that light coming coming right through and of course without that pin and then over time we've noticed that these screws here will actually loosen up and there goes your zero for any IR or laser you know so something else that I've just happened to notice other than that so far it's got the nicest trigger 
out of the ones that we've shot. I'll, I'll say that's true. And yeah. you know, I think that the incorporation of a hand stop on the hand guard when you have your hand so close to the muzzle is a very yeah. good idea. Yeah, that I will give it as well. I also like the length of the Picatinny up top. That's solid. I am a fan of the forward extraction. Mm -hmm. that, that I am definitely a fan of. As far as the jamming issues we're having right now, it could simply be a maintenance issue. Yep. <laughs> and, and I found it was interesting because you were firing with your support hand getting hit by the forward ejection. Yeah. You know, of course. So having your firing hand here, I didn't feel it touch no. my hand anywhere. So it's it's sailing over my hand. When I've shot it before in the past mm -hmm. and as a righty and it's on the right hand side, I've never noticed actually the, the extracting brass hit me. Yeah. So there you have it. Now let's move on to the uh, VHS or dare I say the Hellion. Hellion, yeah. Now one thing I can say about the Springfield Hellion is if I need to see if the chamber is clear or not, that is a completely different visualization than what we have with some of the others. I can get right up in there, see everything that I need to see and say, yep, we're clear. Or, you know, even a, oh, can I even do a chamber check? Let's see. Load it and, oh, well, what do you know? I can. All right, let's shoot this guy, see how it feels. Okay, so the bolt release I think feels a little funky, mm -hmm. but it's it's not so bad. I also thought that the very narrow opening of the magwell was going to be a little bit more problematic mm -hmm. uh, than it actually was. I was able to kind of scoop that right up in there, and you know pretty much get right where I need to be with it. So yeah, you should tell me what you think. All right. So again, you know, left-handed controls. AMBE charging handle, I like these features. Um, let's let's give it a try. So what'd you think about that one? So, you know, I really like the Hellion. Um, I think it's it's cool. It's got an interesting recoil impulse. Like it's it's yes. not that it's stronger or weaker, it's like it's longer. Okay. Yeah. So like if you imagine a recoil as being like, you know, a punch to your shoulder, and two two three is not that strong, so you know it's but then this is more like a push, push. Um and of course, the trigger was pretty spongy. Yeah, the trigger on this one, I think right now the MDRX is taking the cake when it comes to trigger, uh, which, you know, so there's that. But yeah, the trigger, long pull, long reset, but it's not not terrible. I mean, certainly it feels like it's a, a usable trigger. Like, I mean, yeah, we're yeah. not shooting super rapid fire, but you know, like you could definitely use this trigger. Um, I really do like the fact that, like we've mentioned before, there's iron sights on this rifle. Yeah. So you can actually see they lock in place out of the way. You hit that little button, they pop up. One here on the front. And then you can put them out of the way. Unlike the uh, the other ones, they don't in the Picatinny rail. Rather, they're kind of in front of and behind the Picatinny right. rail. Yeah, which is also kind of nice. So that way you don't have to worry about setting your optics on top of your iron sight, like I was talking about with the X95. All right. So if you needed to deploy these pretty quick, you could. But also keep in mind, traditional AR style height sights like the EOTech are sitting higher than what these are because mm -hmm. there's already like, you know, holy sight over bore Batman, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, height over bore, I mean. So yeah, you know, there's there it is pretty high up there, but at the same time, it, it is a little bit easier for that target acquisition. It just feels a little bit more comfortable. So there's that. Uh, again, length of pull, adjustable comb height. The gun's nice. Yeah, Springfield did a good job with lightweight, it. Lightweight feels good, man. Yeah, or, you know, Croatia did a good job with it. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our last one. Last one, all right. Positioning of the controls on the RDB, like we already talked about, a little strange. Uh, the mag release, you're gonna use your uh, support hand like a trigger, or your support, you know, trigger finger and pop that mag out of there. And then the bolt release right back here, bolt catch slash release, interestingly enough. But you can also rock the charging handle in place to lock the bolt to the rear. But if you have an optic there, it is literally touching the optic. So there's that, and you can just HK slap. 
to get that out of the way, or in this case, whatever that was, HK Flick. Uh, so let's go ahead and just let's try this out here. All right. I just feel like I should just... <sighs> Kel-Tec. So how was it? How was it? <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's kind of impressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Try it out. All right. Let's take a look here. Hmm. So yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to get my thumb all the way up there to get that uh, that right hand of safety, but you know, it's still there. It's nice. It's nice. Okay. Get that out of there. That magwell isn't the greatest. All right, all right. So something I noticed with like the downward extraction is that it's actually like uh, bouncing off the, I noticed like sometimes over here, sometimes here. I will admit, I did not notice yeah. the bullets hitting me. They probably yeah. were. Yeah, they, they were. were. They were. That's what brass, I wanted to see, bullets. yeah. Um, probably were, but I did not really notice anything. And it was very pleasant in that, you know, you didn't have, anything yeah. hitting your face or <laughs> hitting your arms. It was yeah. just, it was down, right? Uh, that's one of the things I really always loved about the PS90 is I could sometimes tell when the brass was hitting, yeah. but it was just a little kind of dink off of my uh, tactical tummy. Good. It's <laughs> pleasantly surprising. I'm not gonna lie. It was actually a pretty pleasurable shooter. Yeah. I will say the trigger's weird. Um, yeah. I don't know if you noticed that or not, but there the reset doesn't feel like there is one if you without shooting There's a very very subtle you mind if I show really quick There's a very I'm looking as if I can see into the bolt, but you know I mean, underneath here. Uh, uh, oh, yeah Again that clear. problem of checking the chamber, right? Yeah, you can see the bolt reciprocating back and forth down there where the magwell is Whew, That's a that's a lot to get to but just this trigger. All right, so a little bit of take up you see, just applying a little bit of pressure, a little bit of a squeeze, and then it drops. Okay. Very loud, very clunky, and that makes up for the reset because let me know when you think it resets. <laughs> I think I heard it. Yeah. Bink. You know, and now imagine that while shooting, you're just pretty much having to slap the trigger to, to if you're thinking, is it and in now, battery? Is it ready to go? When you're the shooter, often you're you're waiting for a tactile yeah. reset, right? You're not listening for a click. You're you're waiting to feel that that reset inside of there, which is transmitted to your finger through the trigger. Right. You could feel it. Um, I don't think you could feel it on on this gun, mm -hmm. um, but. I mean, it was very enjoyable to shoot. I think that the uh, little pencil barrel yeah. getting so much weight off the front of it, it just made it feel dreamy. Like you you could just sit there and hold it all day, point it on target. And for people out there who've tried, you know, to shoulder an M14 or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know how hard it can be to just keep it held in place. Yeah. Uh, I think you would probably do this all day. Yeah, this one would be a lot of fun I mean, just again, a pleasant all day shooter. I will say though, just shooting a little bit, I'm noticing the rails getting a little loose. Like, you know, Ooh, the, the yeah, can you hear a little rattle? Yeah, a little rattle there. Um, I also will say, uh, be careful where you put your thumb of your support hand, because I, I got my thumb a little bit high up here under this gas tube. And uh, yeah, it was it it's, a little it's warm. A little warm. Huh? Uh, I had get, mine pretty much resting on the charging handle. Yeah, I saw that. You kind of, it kind of does a C-clamp almost, right? Yeah. Um, so just that's that's also something to take note of is that there is a gap here next to the gas tube. You know, honestly, this is like if you're a driver, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're thinking like, you know, combat element, something like that, you're driving and you don't want a full size rifle that you're trying to manipulate. I feel like this out of all the ones we shot would probably be like because look how compact this one is. I don't know if it's made it compact and it's just very lightweight. I mean, Caltech did a really good job with it. It's just I probably lock tight these screws holding the rail in place, and uh, the controls it, aren't even as bad as, as I even thought. Even as kind of rudimentary as this looks, mm -hmm. it functioned great. Yeah, it actually did everything I wanted it to do. Uh, the bolt release, I thought, I mean, it was a little stiff, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, if you put some purpose behind it, it went home, and I saw what you did, just charge it, yeah, and that works just as well. So, all right, Caltech, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> 
All right, so final thoughts, rank them. Yeah, let's go, let's go back to the bench and uh, let's get our final, final thoughts put together. Yeah. This one's gonna be kind of hard to like place a uh, fifth through first place, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I, I guess we kind of have to. So what, what's your number five pick? Yep, same. Yeah. All right, so. MDRX, I don't think that's a fair thing for the MDRX because part of my problem is the fact that, you know, we're having, the, it's not just that we're having the issues, but they would be so hard to remediate, especially if you were at anything other than just the range. Yeah. Like, you know, we had three rounds stuck in here and, you know, it's hard to see up into the action. I, I don't think it's fair. Maybe we do need to look at uh, maintenance or, or something, but uh, it's gotta be. And we have had this one for quite a bit of a while. Again, not making too many excuses for it, but I totally see where you're coming from. MDRX is just gonna come last for me too because of the rail. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just one thing that, that I just kinda like think it's a, a little bit of a setback. Uh, but ultimately, it is a pleasurable gun to shoot. That brake, however, reminds wow. you that you're shooting it. Uh, that is for sure. Reminds short. everyone else that you're shooting it. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as far as number four, I actually went with, um, the Styrog. Me too. Yep. What? Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> yeah. So it's just feature poor compared to these yeah. other rifles. Yeah. And then also as a left-hander, I don't like being hit in the face all the time. <laughs> That's fair enough. And yeah, again, it does, it, it has a special place in my heart. Like I want one, you know, that's because it's number four on my list. I'd still probably take it over majority of the pool pops. No one is saying it's not a classic, really cool rifle, yeah. especially for anyone who grew up in the eighties and is a fan of action movies. Right, exactly. It, but that's like, you know, if you were comparing the most effective rifles and you had a, a lever action and mm -hmm. an AR, like they are more effective, even the right. lever actions are cool. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe not against a bear, depending on what you're talking about, but I get where you're coming from. All right, cool. So number four, what's your number three? My number three is going to be the X95. Really? Yep. Okay. So again, I, I had a less of a problem because it does have the shell deflector. It did it somewhat, Yeah. but you know, it, it did uh, still, you know, end up having uh, kind of hit me in the face. Yeah. I thought it's a great rifle, uh, but just comparatively, I think I enjoyed shooting some other rifles more. Okay. Fair enough. For me, mm -hmm. it's going to be the RDB. Okay. The RDB simply because uh, the optic mounting, whatever they got going on over there, isn't like the most preferred thing. You're gonna pick it up and grab it really quick just to show the audience. Uh, I mean, it again, it's still surprising that mm -hmm. as how well it went, I guess, you know, but at the end of it all, I was like, okay, the trigger was something like the reset. I, I could get past, you know, long trigger pulls and stuff like that. But for me personally, if I want to be able to shoot a little bit quicker, I like to know when that reset is mm -hmm. so I can get that, I can get that mechanical feel for it and then run it. Yeah. If I feel like I have to pretty much let the trigger all the way go to know that I've got an, that I've got a full reset, then I'm kind of like, ah, crap, where am I? You know, I'm having to think too much about it. So I like to have that little bit of support and you know, just a little bit of mag or a little bit of rail wobble, you know. Other than that though, the, the RDB did great. Yeah, and in fact, that is why the RDB is my number two. It's your number two. That's right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought that it was a super pleasant to shoot again. I feel like I could stand like this all day long. Yeah. And uh, you know, that very lightweight uh, pencil barrel. Um, I thought all of the controls seemed pretty accessible to me mm -hmm. and it was pleasant to shoot. I do agree with the fact that there is basically no tactile observable especially when you're shooting right like yeah. it's one thing to stand here run the action and look for it you're not going to try to look for it when you're shooting you right. you need to feel it it's got to be there but i just felt that you know that was not hindering my ability to shoot the rifle at least the style of shooting we were doing here and uh i, I thought other than that it was actually a surprise strong contender yeah. it, it, honestly yeah it, it, yes it yeah the little underdog over there uh my number two is going to be the hellion okay it's going to be the hellion only because i like that it's feature packed and all the other neat things that it's got going on uh but for me personally i i'm just not a big fan of this bolt release back mm -hmm. here that's something that you know i feel like they i don't know it's just not my thing right I, other than that though i was still pretty decent with the reload with it the hide over bore is way on up there it is. Uh, but at the end of it all i am actually a really big fan of this gun that's why it's my number two and so obviously if you can do the process math. elimination <laughs> my number one pick is you know. the springfield hellion and mine is the iwi tavor and i think we're probably gonna have similar reasons so i thought that the fact that this is a very feature rich rifle yes uh was super important again you know <sighs> left-handed it's important to me how the controls are set up sure and i think that you know the fact that your safety and uh charging handle things are all very accessible like i said 
here on the uh, the RDB, that safety is so high up. It really felt like I had to break my grip to get up there. This mm -hmm. is very natural, right? Yeah. Um, you can check and remediate problems very easily here with this uh, the uh, ejection port that's right there by your face. Yeah, which is also very similar. Very with, similar there. Again, I like that a lot with the Tavor. Absolutely. And uh, the fact that, you know, really I did not feel the same issues. It was more hitting my shoulder mm -hmm. kind of over here. So it, it's something you can definitely phase out when you're shooting the rifle. You don't have to, you know, it's, it's not taking your attention like some of the other things. Uh, I Granted, I would love for it to not hit me at all, <laughs> but uh, I definitely think that, you know, this was just kind of my favorite shooting one. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. Again, I love the way that one felt and everything too. And I'm surprised too that you wouldn't give a little bit more leniency to the long stroke to vor action. Listen, you know? it, it gets points in my book. <laughs> definitely 100%, but you know, if, uh, if it's hard for, to shoot the rifle, then as much as I might like it, um, and you know, I, I love the fact that we both picked guns that had the iron sights. We've mentioned yeah. that a couple times, but uh, I definitely think it's very cool that we both picked those rifles. Right. I will say this though, if we want to talk about iron sights, mm -hmm. uh, there are a couple, I, we've already talked about the P90, which actually comes with three sets of sights. It's fantastic. fantastic. And then the original Tavor actually has that one and a half power, I think it is, mm -hmm. uh, integrated optic, and on top of that are iron sights. That's right. <laughs> so those old school designs, I just get it, you know? In, in fact, I think that if you, there could be something to be said about, you know, judging people based off of which iron sights is your go-to on the PS90. Yeah, that's true. Are you a left sight, a peep sight, or a right, right sight? <laughs> that's right. So guys, let us know what you think. Whose list do you agree with more? We were pretty much neck and neck there for a moment. Uh, yeah. And comment down below too, is there a bullpup that you think should have been on this list that wasn't? Is there one, I mean, yeah, tell us your list. You know, maybe these are the ones that you guys would also choose if you could, uh, but these are also the ones that we had available in the warehouse. And we decided, let's let's do this video. These are like some yeah. of the most popular bullpups. Let's run it. Yeah, I, and I think this was a super fun activity. I don't really get to shoot bullpups often. Um, and, you know, it's a style of shooting that, uh, you know, you, you get to expand a little bit, you know, feel a little uncomfortable because it's not something you're super familiar with unless it's something you train with a lot. Right, and this was the one that obviously, I, that just came very natural, yeah. you know, and that that's where it was like, all right, cool. I, I'm most effective with this. Obviously, I've got probably the most amount of time with this one, mm -hmm. debatable. So there is that too, and the MBRX. And we did do the. All right, so all right, the point's been averted. All right, he shoots we'll for a living, back. is what he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> there is that. So let us know again, comment section, light it up. Let us know which one is your number one, and don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com to check out all the awesomeness there. Because who doesn't like uh, guns that don't cost you anything? That's right. Yeah, yeah. you know, I'm just throwing that out there. CF Contest. Santa comes a bunch of times a year, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> uh, about you know about you know every other week. Yeah, yeah so. average every two or three weeks, I yeah, guess. So, yeah, you know, you know, all right, there we go. All right, guys, as always, we appreciate you, your business, and your viewership. God bless. And we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.